Call the city council meeting to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Knight. Here. Alderman Cole. Here. Alderman Here. Alderman Shockey. Here. Alderman Subak. Here. Alderman Calvay. Alderman Winger. Here. Alderman Wesley. Here. Mayor Johnson. Here. Quorum be present. Would you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a motion to approve the minutes, March 15th, 2007. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On the question? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bills, Alderman Winger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve a list of bills dated April 5, 2007 for $342,791.24. Is there a second? Second. On the question? Roll call. Alderman Knight? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Tyson? Yes. Alderman Shockley? Yes. Alderman Subak? Yes. Alderman Holloway? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Wesley? Yes. That passes. Uh, without objection, I'm going to skip down to uh, Mayor's report. Uh, first item I have is a proclamation. Uh, whereas 5 million Americans, including 4,000 schools, uh, will observe National TV Turnoff Week, and whereas 98% of all families in the United States own television sets, and in the average home, the television is on for, every time I read this every year, it amazes me. On the average home, the television is on for 7 hours and 40 minutes every day. Whereas the average American child watches more than 1,250 hours of television in a year, and is in, in school for only 900 hours in a year. And that same average child will spend only 38.5 minutes per week in meaningful conversation with a parent. Do parents agree back there? <laughs> uh, but will witness 16,000 murders and will have seen 200,000 violent acts on television by the age of 18. And whereas television viewing is passive, sedentary, and non-experiential, and has been linked to obesity in children and adults because when people watch TV, they are not playing, learning, working, communicating, improving their community, exercising, doing chores, helping an elderly person, or in any way improving their lives or the lives of others. Whereas participation in National TV Turnoff Week is voluntary and meant to be fun and gives people an opportunity to reassess the role that television plays in their lives and participates engage in a broad range of screen-free activities that foster greater social, physical, academic, and creative development. And whereas this year marks the 13th annual Turnoff Week and Oak Brook Elementary School has been observing National TV Turnoff Week for 11 consecutive years, now therefore I, Kenneth P. Johnson, Mayor of the City of Wooddale, uh, to recognize the week of April 23rd through April 29th, 2007, as National TV Turnoff Week in Wooddale, and urge all citizens to turn off their television sets and turn on their lives. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and caused the great seal of the City of Wooddale to be affixed, signed by myself and the City Clerk. Next item, was it uh, a couple weeks ago on a Sunday? I had the opportunity to go to a basketball game and watch the Wooddale Spurs uh, play the Wooddale Cavaliers. Now the Spurs, Jeff by, coached by Jeff Mermius, had lost to the other team twice before during the regular season uh, by two points and by three points. Uh, the end of the first period, our Wooddale Spurs, or would the Itasca Spurs? We're down by 10 points. At the end of the second period, Wooddale Spurs were down by 10 points. With three minutes to go in the third period was the first lead change, where the Spurs actually went on top. And for the remainder of the third period and the fourth period, there were several lead changes. Um, one of the hard things about coaching is to know when to call a proper timeout. Twice during the fourth period, uh, Mr. Murmuse called key timeouts. Uh, once when the team was having a hard time crossing the center court line, you have to do that within 10 seconds. He called a timeout with nine seconds to go just before they would have lost the ball. And uh, once when they were in, inbounding the ball and uh, one of his players, a guard, was being double teamed and was about to lose possession of the ball, he called another key timeout. 
when the score was just about one point difference between the two teams. Uh, with less than one minute to go, the Wooddale Spurs were up by four. Now the leading scorer of the Cavaliers was driving for a basket. Uh, it was their tallest player, the best player, and uh, their best shooter. Uh, he shot, she shot, right, she, and was fouled. Now this is the biggest player and happened to be fouled by the smallest player of the Wooddale Spurs. Would you stand up in the second row right in the middle there? <laughs> now one of the things about basketball, if you're going to foul somebody, make sure they don't score the basket. So next time, make sure. Okay. She shot and she made the basket. So at that point, the Wooddale Spurs were only up by four points, and she had a shot to make, a free throw, and she missed the shot. Uh, the Spurs then um, got the ball back, uh, got the rebound. They were fouled at uh, half court. Uh, at that point, they were in super bonus. They made both shots, and at that point, they were up by six. Uh, the opponent got the ball, drove, shot twice at the basket. They missed. Spurs got the rebound. Uh, with time expired, well, with the rebound, there was another foul. Uh, they scored again two more points on shooting. Uh, final score was Wooddale Spurs 57 and the Cavaliers 48 for a great job, guys and ladies. Uh, Jeff, if you would join me at the podium and the team. Coach. Before I yield the microphone to uh, Jeff, one more comment. When I was talking to the city manager about this, and he said, uh, well, if Jeff can handle the basketball team and the kids at that age, he'll have no problem dealing with the city council. Jeff. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily true or not, but uh, it is it, true that he said well, that. Well, it's true that he said that, but I, I don't know if that's accurate information. Um, but he's been here longer than me, so I guess it's accurate enough. Um, I just want to first, I want to thank the parents um, for a good season. I, I think uh, the parents have done a really good job because uh, all the kids listened to me the whole season long, so I, I thought that was amazing. Um, so I want to thank the parents for a good season. Um, I also want to you know, thank my assistant coach. He was a good assistant coach and, and helped me out with some uh, key strat uh, strategy during the season. Um, and for me, uh, the reason I volunteered for coaching was it wasn't so much about winning. I know a lot of the other teams really only cared about winning from the examples that they set. But I wanted to uh, teach the kids uh, the game of basketball and how to play the correct way. And uh, I think I did that and by teaching them the correct way. We ended up uh, winning the championship anyway. So I think it was a successful season and uh, uh, good job, Spurs, and it was, uh, it was just a great season. Both refs were guys who worked for me, and I did mention that Jeff also was a good guy. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, to win this championship, uh, all we had to do is work as a team, concentrate, and teamwork. Uh, the coaching was great. They taught us a lot this year. 
uh, new inbound plays and how to shoot the ball correctly. And again, we only won this because it's just teamwork. Anybody else want to say anything? They're a quiet group. Uh, somehow I don't believe that's true, but uh, they showed a lot more energy on the basketball court. That was for sure. Great job, great game. I think the entire city council wants to wish you congratulations. If you'd walk by, I think they want to shake your hand. And we have some gifts for you for Dairy Queen, too, which I'm sure you can use. So, Robert? Stephanie? Zach? Anthony? Jeremy? Evan? Congratulations. Aaron? Congratulations. Uh, we also have two representatives with us, ladies, if you want to come and join us, uh, regarding the National TV Turnoff Week. Mayor Johnson, as a token of our appreciation for your support, not only for our children at Oakbrook Elementary, but for the families in this community that will also celebrate this nationwide event, we'd like to present you with an Oprah Faxes Spirit Wear Polo, which we know the kids will get a kick out of you wearing at the pep rally, along with a baseball hat. Thank you very much for your support. Could I have their names? Could I have their names? Sure. Kristen Trentadu. And Francine Beza. Trentadu, T-R-E-N-T-A-D-U-E. Thank you. And Francine Beza, B-A-Z-O-S. Very good. We're looking too. forward to it. We are too. Sure. Thank you. For the pepper, okay. I don't forget that now. I yeah, will yeah, right remember. <laughs> Jeff, if you want to, uh, if you guys want to take off, and ladies, that's, that's fine. And we thank the parents for their support as well, obviously. I have one more announcement under uh, Mayor's report. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is doing a wine tasting and silent auction uh, sponsored by Suburban Bank and Trust and the Bank of Commerce. It's uh, Friday, April 13th from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Salt Creek uh, Golf Club. Uh, there'll be entertainment, which I understand is Rat Pack type songs. There is going to be five wine vendors there and uh, it should be a good event and all funds raised are going to be donated to the Bensonville Wooddale Food Pantry and the Combined Scholarship Program. Uh, I do have tickets with me tonight if anybody's interested. They're $20 in advance. Uh, for seniors, they're $15 or at the door is $25. That concludes my report. So we'll go back to citizens' comment. Do any citizens wish to address the City Council? Uh, if so, go, you'd go to the podium and give us your name and address. Alderman Ptolemy? I'm just curious, would it be appropriate, we had received something in the uh, in our package, uh, one of the documents that I'd like to make a comment on? Yes, please proceed. Okay, we had, in our documentation, we had received a memorandum from uh, Jeff Mermis, and it was regarding the O'Hare Noise Com Compatibility Commission meeting. And I don't know if everybody got a chance to read this, but on page three, basically, because we are not a member of this, 
there was an alderman from, uh, I believe it's, uh, oh, I forget what, what, what community he's from, but anyway, to make a long story short, or he's from Park Ridge, to make a long story short, um, what he basically did was he delayed soundproofing that was supposed to be coming to Wooddale because he wants it for his community. And so they're, they're putting it on hold for almost another four years. This just kind of reiterates why, you know, I've been stressing that we really need to get into or on this commission as soon as possible so that Wooddale has a strong voice in it um, because so that situations like this won't happen. I mean, they specifically talk about the runway, which currently goes over Wooddale today, um, and it is being expanded by 3,000 feet. And I just feel that, you know, if we had a voice on this, um, maybe uh, it wouldn't be going to another community. It would be coming to us like it's supposed to be. I'll ask that Alderman Pizak if you'll add that to your Public Health Safety and Judiciary Committee for uh, next week. Is that agreeable? Uh, I do have three written communiques. Uh, first one is from FBG Corporation, dear Mayor Johnson. Uh, I've been conducting business with the City of Wooddale Building Department uh, for over 15 years, and I would like to let you know that you have one of the best, well-run, and efficient building departments in the state of Illinois. Uh, being in the construction industry and working with your community development department made my job a lot easier. I hope the Arbor Woods subdivision is as successful as my Tall Oak subdivision. Uh, very truly yours, Frank Judas, president of FBG Corporation. Can I ask Roger a question? Alderman Tommy. Roger, how much did you pay this guy? <laughs> Well, Mr. Nowak, I do have a second letter here, <laughs> which I was received at the, uh, received, <laughs> came from one of our senior citizens at the Senior Club, Mayor Johnson. Uh, it's been one month since I called 766-5133 uh, Wooddale Property Maintenance Department and spoke to Joe. I told him about the garbage can problem. Uh, they are being left outside along with Recycle buckets seven, seven days a week. Uh, they are also putting the garbage cans on the sides of their houses, of their homes, along with old discarded floors, uh, something else, etc. Uh, when it can be seen as you walk along the sidewalks. Uh, nothing has been done to eliminate this problem. Some of the neighbors put all kinds of garbage, trash, one or two days after garbage pickup, and it remains in front of their house by the curb until the following week. Uh, the city of Wooddale is not enforcing the rules and regulations pertaining to the garbage pickup. Uh, these people do not listen to the rules and are running down the neighborhood. Please do something about the situation. The addresses are 109, 168, 122, and 142 East Murray Drive. Uh, Thank you, hoping you can solve the problem uh, because your city employees, um, your city employees like Joe won't do anything about it. So Roger, if you would pursue that one, I'd appreciate that as well. Uh, third letter is from Tioga VF Post 2149 to the city of Wooddale. Uh, we, the members of Tioga Post 2149 VFW request permission to collect donations for Buddy Poppy Days on May 17th, 18th, and 19th at several intersections, uh, Georgetown Square Shopping Center and across the street from Target and Jewel. Uh, we appreciate your cooperation in this project. All proceeds are used for veterans and their families. Uh, thank you, years in service, Richard Story, uh, commander of the VFW Post 2149. That request will be approved. If you could send them a notice, surely I'd appreciate it. Uh, that brings us to Mr. Manager's report. I have one item of uh, information. The city of Wooddale is beginning a new program called the Wooddale Homeowner Ownership Initiative. Uh, you might have already heard the Planning, Zoning, and Building Committee discuss the program on web TV or local cable. The DuPage Home Ownership Center, together with the American Institute of Architects, have scheduled a workshop 
at the Wooddale Junior High on Saturday, April 21st at 9 a.m. The DuPage Home Ownership Center and the Institute of Architects will volunteer their time and work together, together with our local governmental officials, business leaders, and our residents to design a conceptual redevelopment scenario for the Georgetown apartment, apartments and shopping center area. As we prepare for this workshop, the city would like to extend an invitation to residents to attend and observe on April 21st. Any questions about the project can be directed to Jeff Mermis at the City Hall, that's 766-4900. Other communities with programs like this already in place include Highland Park, Naperville, and Lake Forest. The main goal of the program is to provide high quality homes at affordable prices that meet or exceed the requirements of the community. That ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Manager. That brings us to consent agenda. There's nothing on the consent agenda. That brings us to community uh, committee chairman reports, planning, zoning, and building committee. Alderman Knipe. Okay, first item is report and recommendation, letter of credit reduction request from Pulte Homes, Bristol Park, Manhart Consulting, on behalf of Pulte Home Corporation, he has requested a reduction of their letter of credit from $1,677,523 to $578,185. I make that in the form of motion to approve and to require the developer to, to provide a replacement letter of credit in the amount of $578,185 prior to final sign-off. Second. One minute. Uh, moved and seconded. Alderman Coles. I got a question. Roger, how can they, how can Dennis have a complete inspection on it and they still have two, two townhouses to build? The uh, two, two unit, or rather the two structures that have not yet been permitted for are, um, over and above these particular, uh, under these particular amounts. So these particular uh, dollar figures have to do with those, pe with those included. And the only inspections that have to be done there other than for the building inspections, the drainage and the stormwater inspections have all been completed. I still have a question. Sure. Well, it, it says the Venice staff has completed the site inspection. Now, when they build the houses, they're going to come back in and inspect the, the units that are the structural work and stuff like that, aren't they? Uh, Bennis will not be doing those. Those are done. Those are done in house. Mr. Nowak, isn't the isn't the letter of credit reduction request for things like the uh, storm sewers and sewer the lines and storm water, water management and, water. and all the public improvements? <clears throat> Excuse me, public improvements. I wanted to know. No problem. Anything further on the question? Roll call. Alderman Knight? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Pisick? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Subak? Yes. Alderman Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Leslie? Yes. That's approved. That concludes my report, Mayor. Public House, JCD, and Judiciary, Alderman Pisak. No report. Public Works, Alderman Subak. No report. Finance Administration, Alderman Winger. No report. Community and Economic Development, Alderman Ptolemy. No report. There is not other business. We do need an executive session tonight. Uh, for personnel and review of the official minutes pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C1 and 2C21. May I have a motion to adjourn uh, the City Council to executive session. So, second. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call. Alderman Knight. Yes. Alderman Coles. Yes. Alderman Pisek. Yes. Alderman Shockey. Alderman Subak. Yes. Alderman Ptolemy. Yes. Alderman Winger. Yes. Alderman Westbrook. Yes. That passes.